appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. How to Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 46. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building, episode 46. We're going to close out 2021 with a banger, y'all. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, guys. How you doing? My name is Barbie. I'm from Let, Let Me Touch You Podcast. I always get tongue twisted with the let. I don't know why. That's, that's cool. We like fuck ups here. We don't <laughs> do no editing here on the How to Hustle Podcast with Hype. Let the uh, listeners know where you're coming in from because we'd like to know. Let them know international hype is not just a hashtag, it's a way of life. I am from the Bronx, New York. Shouts Glad out to, to be Bronx. here with you. Yeah, BX. Shouts <laughs> shout out to New York. As we go through the rundown, you'll learn that New York is in there. Okay, hit you with the rundown now. <laughs> People keep telling me this rundown is getting longer and longer. I'm looking to make it just a little bit longer, y'all. Now, it's good. I love it. Copy that. It E-block Radio me. Network. Yes, yeah, that's what I. That's what I really do it for. Is let people know, like, yeah, this nigga is working. I'm like, yeah, you can also do this shit too. Monday, E Block Radio Network, two o'clock every Monday on the E Block Radio Network. Then we go Tuesday, GFT Radio Network, two o'clock. Wednesday, Kickback at uh, eight a.m. eight p.m. Central Standard Time. When we go Thursday, it's WTNUPhilly.com, 12.30. Friday, I Say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m. And THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. out in New York. <laughs> Every Saturday. Um, custom Hustle jerseys. Custom Hustle jerseys is what I'm currently wearing right now. I have recording blocks, y'all. So y'all going to look at this and say, damn, nigga, how many days in a row you wore this joint? It was all the same day. <laughs> custom <laughs> Hustle jerseys, though, is my clothing line. You follow that at Custom Hustle jerseys on Instagram. And H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company, H2H Cleaning on Instagram. We are here to help. Now, uh, also How to Hustle Seminars. Shouts out to everybody that was live, locked in on How to Hustle Seminars. The seminars are over right now, but you can purchase the archives at the same price that you could have purchased the live. Just get with me. Now, episode 46 we are at. Yes, episode 46. How do you protect yourself from yourself? This came Excellent. from a post that you had. Let's let's get let let's let the audience behind the curtain a little bit. This came from a post that you had. Uh, you tagged me in the post, and I said, "Damn, this is kind of similar to some shit that I've been through myself." Let's not burn mm-hmm. this out in these comments right now. We can burn this out on the podcast. So let's go there. How you protect yourself from yourself? Okay, so that post it was a clip from an episode that I did. If I'm not mistaken, no November, right? Was that it? I think that was it. Where um be accurate. I got you. Um, where I'm joined by Styles from the Brunch Hour podcast, and we're basically talking about like setting boundaries with people. When it comes to protecting yourself from yourself, it's like the easiest thing said, but the hardest thing done, especially for someone like me. I'm I'm a I call myself a yes ma'am. I'm that friend that you can come to. And even if I don't have it to help you out with something, I'm going to make sure I find out, you know, a way to make it happen for you. So throughout the years, yeah, throughout (laughs) the years, I've learned that all I was doing was killing myself for people who didn't appreciate it. And I'm I'm learning still because I haven't mastered it. It takes time. And perfection is beauty was the episode. That's the title of my season. Oh shit, my bad. I just went to no, the it's okay. and on it. it. Yeah, it has to be <laughs> that one. Um, so as time has gone by, I've learned how to say no without feeling bad about it. So what I do is I'll analyze whatever it is that people are asking me about. And before I answer the question to satisfy them, I see what it is. How is it gonna affect me? You get it? So it's kind of I'm now more or less, I think more about things instead of just responding just to respond when I'm in certain situations, instead of dwelling about it, there's certain things in life that you really can't control, you know? So what I do now is I am more logical than I am emotional when it comes to a lot of things. Something you just said right there was always the problem for me. 
certain things in life you can't control. Uh, I'm a control freak. I got no problem admitting it. Nothing wrong with you admitting uh, your, your own faults or your own things about yourself. It's when you're in denial that's a problem. Mm-hmm. So I got no problem admitting that I'm a control freak. And not being able to control a situation, I hate to be involved in that situation. <laughs> if I can't control it, if I can't point guard it, if I can't run it the way that I need to run it, then I'm not even involved. Um, things either run my way or they can't run. <laughs> I feel you. What's your sign, if you don't mind me asking? Cancer, July the 1st. Okay. Um, yeah. My uh, my whole thing always, too, is like, I want to see us all win. And that's always been my thing. So it was like, when I was a kid, my man grew up across the street and, all right, the water is off. Why y'all water off? Not even understanding that because you're a child. All right, well, your water off. Our water works. Just come over here. You can take a shower at my crib. Mm-hmm. We're seven or eight or something when I'm doing this. Like, so this is me since forever. Where it's like, I don't want to see you in a bad, especially if you're, if you're somebody who I fuck with, you're somebody that's on my team. It's like, I can't be doing good and you're struggling. It's like, I can yeah. find a way to make shit happen for myself. But I always would use this in the past tense because this is the way that it was. <clears throat> I would always make my situation more difficult for me because it's like, I'm trying to look out for this one or that one. And there's so many different people that I would be doing this for. Now, I would have a line where I'm not doing it for everybody, but I got to a point where when I had a problem, as the person who everybody turns to, nobody helps the helper. The helper has nobody to turn to. The helper has nobody checking in with them. You be the person that sends out 20, yo, y'all good, yo, okay, text, and you might receive two of those in the last six months. So just like, like me, I swear to God. It's that's crazy. why I said when you did when you put that clip in, that's why I said, look, we're not gonna bang this all out in these comments. This is what we're here for. Um, yeah. So it was like I got to a point where when I was having a problem, it was like shit, I'm looking around and I ain't got nobody to go to. I don't even know how to ask you to help me with this because I've always been a person who I can rely on me and I ain't gonna let me down. So I can figure it out. Yeah. And that becomes a bit of a problem when you're married. And it's like, look, you don't have to do this shit on your own. Whether that can be a male or a female, like we're figuring out here, where it's like, this is the reason that you have this other person here is to help you out with this shit. If you just got to push this ball up, this this rock up this hill, then what the fuck did you get them for? If they just going to watch yeah. you push it. If you're not going to allow them to help you push it, if you're just going to keep going, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. So <laughs> that was the thing mm-hmm. that like, I had to, I had to accept uh that it couldn't always just be me and that you can't save and help everybody. So that was my whole thing about, it would always be, yeah, for me. Then it'd be like, damn, well, what you gonna do? Then once you have kids and once you get the responsibility of others, it's like, well, I remember telling my man, like, if I give you this money, this is taking this shit away from my kids. So bless you. (laughs) So I'm like, if I give you this, then it's taken away from my kids. (laughs) And that's not a good thing. So if I'm telling you now and I'm giving you this, but I need this shit back. Like we ain't 19 no more. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I really need this back because like she needs whatever. Like you never know what the hell happens when you got kids. Yeah. And, and people put you in predicaments like that. And it's definitely not cool, you know, because you wouldn't do it to them. But then again, they'll do it to you. Um, I think copy. the time <laughs> where I learned the most that you can't control anything because again I'm a control freak as well so that's why you're talking and I'm here smiling because everything you're saying is me I want to control everything when I tell you I have like a million alarms set on my phone because I have certain times where I have to get out of my bed I have certain times I have to get out the shower certain times I gotta wake up this child that child like if you look at my alarm list, you'll laugh, right? 530, but, 535, 540, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, things like that. Mm-hmm, that's me. So the time that helped me realize that I can't control everything and I have to be okay with things that are out of my control, it this happened for me last year when I lost my job due to COVID. I felt like my whole world was gone. Because, you know, I'm, like you said, I'm one, I have my own place. I have four kids. No one helps me pay bills. No one helps me do anything. So I was just thinking like, damn, how is this going to happen? And I would stress myself out. 
like it was crazy for me and then one day i realized i was like you know what barbie there's certain things that are out of your control you just have to take each day at a time and things will play out the way it's supposed to so it's like sometimes you put in a situation which will help you you know eventually learn how to protect yourself from yourself because we're our worst critics and life you know a lot if of we're honest think, if we're honest with ourselves we're our worst critics <clears throat> yeah you're right about that if we are honest with ourselves some people some aren't. people make a bad assessment when they look in that mirror and mm -hmm. they misevaluate themselves all the time that's why like i said i'm a control freak i have no problem admitting it uh some people will be controlling as hell and have a problem saying that because they feel like it's a bad thing i don't feel like it's a bad thing as long as you recognize that that's what it is mm -hmm. as long as you are honest enough with yourself to say like me giving you this money to help you out with this cable bill is going to put me in a bad spot so i can't do that yeah like me giving you this money and some people is like i know when i give you this i've never seen this again so one of those things like my mom taught me was like don't give it if you can't afford for it to be gone yeah like if you was really dependent on it to do this that or whatever then you couldn't give it you can't give it to them because you're really mm -hmm. still looking for that 200 dollars <laughs> Yeah, and true. my thing like uh that's how i started all these different trying to do all these different hustles and shit though was like you just said last year with the shutdown and all of that my job i'm a central worker but uh at any given moment they could just come up in here and tell me like no you don't work no more this department don't exist i just was reading the uh, shots out the side uh on the same magazine i'm reading through an article that they was putting out and they got all these restaurants it's like all oh, this shit is about to close like applebee's five guys and Oh, wow. uh fridays all of these different restaurants they name and they're losing all this money and it's like at any given moment these people could come in here and just tell you like yo you don't have a job no more you don't have a position now what like you said i got four yeah. mouths to feed i got a wife and two kids like they're gonna look at you and go daddy we'll be eating for dinner tonight you can't just go ah, yeah. uh, i got a war we gonna split it like mm -hmm. nah. and the crazy thing is that i was an essential worker i was for the hospital that i got fired from i was working there for 20 years and the fact that schools shut down and I had to do homeschool with the kids, you know, I asked them, can I work part-time? They were like, no, we need you full-time or not at all. And I got fired. Mm -hmm. And them, like, time. and like you said earlier, we're the type of people that we're there for people throughout that whole process. When I tell you, I dealt with it alone. I didn't get a phone call, Barbie, are you okay? Do you and the kids have any money for food? Do you and the kids need anything? Nothing, nothing at all. And it sucks because us people who are usually there for everyone, when it's our turn, just for a little phone call, a little text, we never that's get what, it. See, that, that's what I just, that's why I said that though too. I'm not even, like I said, I'm not even equipped to ask for the help. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to ask for the help. But for me, I'm good enough with just the, yo, y'all good text? Yes. Yo, how y'all, you just that alone lets you know that somebody even gives a shit about you. And mm -hmm. I know personally, like you're saying, you sent out 30 of those yourself to mm -hmm. check in with other people in their situations when you have your own situation that's going on. Like, yeah, I got my yeah. own shit going on, but like, I'm going to be able to figure out my shit. But the mm -hmm. fact that that's what it is, is like, nobody, it's like, even then too, it'll be this other shit where the first time you say no, it's like, how could you tell me no? <laughs> yeah. Like, I've been telling you, yeah, for the last fucking 15 years, like, at this point, like, I can't help you no more. Yeah. It's like, true. why haven't you figured this shit out? And mm -hmm. why is it that I'm figuring it out and I realize you even realize you just got to cut niggas off? Or not even um, cut them off. You just, some people, you just got to love from a distance. Yeah, and you move accordingly with them after situations like that. And I'm the type of person that I had a bunch of friends. And once I went through that whole situation alone, I kept it that way. I, you know, I have my friends I speak to every now and again, but I keep them at a distance. The same way you, you know, kept me at a distance when I definitely needed someone, I'm gonna keep you at a distance now that I'm good. And at the end of the day, you just never know. I always tell people that, you know, you never know you're good today, you can be fucked up tomorrow. Tables can turn. Even if it's a gallon of milk that you can help someone with, a box of cereal, you know, any little thing goes a long way. And not even financially, emotionally. Emotional support is a huge thing that some people need more than, you know, materialistic things as well. 
man, when you ask somebody, like, how you doing, do you really mean it? <clears throat> like, or are you just making conversation or do you really want to know? Because it's like, I can just tell you, yeah, or I can really explain this shit to you. Like, this is one of the things, like, I always tell people when I lost my dad, uh, and people, oh, are you okay? No, I'm not. And I really don't want to mm-hmm. talk about it. When you throw somebody out there like that, and it's like, whoa, you didn't just say, oh, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. So then y'all know, yo, you know, Hank ain't cool. You know, you know his dad just, you know what I'm saying? If you throw it straight out there, no, I'm not. People don't know how to handle that. Especially mm-hmm. if you're always the one that people turn to for strength. Or if you're always the one that people turn to for, I got a problem and I need to talk it out and I know you're going to listen. The yes. first time it's like, yeah, I don't have time to listen to this shit. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm busy. I got shit going on. <laughs> like, people will be like taken aback like how the fuck is you going to say that or do me like that and it's like reflect on the 15 years or the 10 years or the two years or however long you've known this person reflect on all of those times where i did tell you shit and you just didn't listen so it's like why mm-hmm. am i gonna keep banging my head up against the wall uh making myself crazy and for some shit that you don't even care about or obviously you don't even value so yeah there's a lot of times us people that are strong i'm sure you've gone through it where you're going through something, you just rather not talk to nobody about it because what can they do to help you? Or do they really care enough to help you? Bingo. That's my thing. Uh, just one of the episodes I did uh, recently was about that. So we're talking about something like that. And it was like the person that I turned to would be like, the person that I turned to with shit is like my mom. But even in that situation, it'd be like, I can't take everything to my mom. I can't really turn to like, this is what the, it was like, Situation might be something between me and my wife. And it's like, I can't turn mm-hmm. to my wife about a problem about my wife. Are you my <laughs> brother from another mother or something? I swear to God. <laughs> and it's like, also, my mom is my therapist. My mom is it. Like, my mom is the, mm-hmm. see, this is how I got like this is because that's my mom. My mom is yeah. the person who the entire family turns to. My dad was the person who people turned to. Like, so that's how I yes. ended up getting this is because this is what I saw. This is always yeah. those things. That, those things that you grow up with are the things that are normalized to you. You either turn head first into it or you turn the other way away from it. Cause it's like either, mm-hmm. damn, that was the, that was a great example. And that's what I want to be. Or that shit wasn't, the, that shit was wrong. And I knew it was wrong when I seen it, when I was growing up and I'm gonna go the whole other way. So that I never had to put my kids through that. Mm-hmm. So like, it's like the two different ways that you look at those different situations. Yeah, it's true. And it sucks. It sucks because there's a lot of times where, I wish I had someone, you know, to speak to that would genuinely give me the advice, good advice, needed advice, not give you the, you know, typical shit that people usually say, oh, it's going to be better. It's all in your head. I hate hearing things like that. It can be worse. Like, no, sit here with me. Help me discuss my situation with you. Help me figure it out. If I'm asking you for your opinion, your advice, it's because I really can't figure it out on my own. And I'm looking to someone else to see how they can, you know, give me some sort of input for it. It takes so much for me to actually, shit, if I actually, like, asked for some help, man, you know how long I was really, like, trying to get that yes. shit situated? Like, shit. That's me. Wow. It's like a last resort type thing when you <sighs> ask somebody for help. It's the last resort. It's the... Uh, it's the credit cards is all maxed out the options are <laughs> the options are none and it's like all right so look this is what i need <laughs> like yeah but believe but believe i didn't turned over every stone possible and like i said they don't even want to make it like a financial thing because it's not always a financial thing sometimes like you said like it's just like you got a problem and you just need to figure it out like one thing i always do like though is i got a couple of cousins i got my aunt my uncle or uh, like I could turn it in with different scenarios where it's like, how would you handle this? Not even mm-hmm. saying that this is my problem or that's my problem. It's just like, look, this is something that I'm looking to, as an idea I'm even coming up with, or it's just something I've been thinking about. And give me your perspective. The problem with too be, I don't have a lot of people whose opinions I respect because the way people be moving is just like, I don't respect the way that you move. So if I don't respect the way that you move and your decision making, I can't go to you. And I don't have a lot of people that I feel like I respect the way that they move so that I would go to them to even ask for 
not even like the advice is just like as I wouldn't even the way that you would go about that isn't the way that I would go about this. Why would we even have that conversation? You know what's my go-to lately? Podcasters. Um, depending on what it is, the the situation, you know, different podcasters talk about different things. I've learned a lot from other podcasters, listening to other podcasters, going live. I go because I do lives every Friday. So, you know, every week we have a different Hold podcast on, around. Oh, oh. Hold up promote that now don't just throw it out I'm there sorry, and, and breeze past your situation <laughs> go ahead and promote so, your situation now that's why we're here every friday night i go on live on instagram Good i'm time. joined by styles at 9 30 eastern standard eastern standard time there i'm joined go. by styles from the brunch hour podcast we have since you know we're both from new york um from the bronx he's from brooklyn so we collab together we call it the nyc home team pods so every Friday we're on at 9.30, from 9.30 to 10.30. And we do something called potting for shots where we're, it's like a drinking game. And at the same time, we bring in a different podcaster every week and shine some light on them, you know? That way, if someone hasn't heard from them, everybody that's there, they can listen and tune into them. And we just basically get to know each other and talk about different scenarios. So while we do that, we learn from that one was another. You. I didn't know that yeah. was you. Uh, That's me. the, the page <laughs> followed me on Twitter and they keep adding me on, on Instagram and I'm like, who the fuck is this? Uh, <laughs> That's okay. me. Damn, I didn't know that though. See, copy that. That's why I said, go ahead and pump it out, promote your situation. That's why we're here. We're here for those yes. cross promotional situations. So on there is a whole bunch, you know, there's different podcasters on the live and in the comments. So we're all sharing how we would handle different situations. And I've learned a lot when it comes to different, you know, relationships with kids. Sometimes the way you see certain things might not be working for you, but yet that's all you know. So you keep doing the same thing over and over again until you hear how someone else handles that same situation. And you're like, you know what? Let me give it a try. You give it a try and it works. So I suggest to the people, if they don't have anyone, podcasters, we're all amazing. We speak about um... things differently. That's one of the things uh, I've touched on a semin- in the seminars with uh, people is there's a million podcasts. You got to find your niche. You got to find a thing that makes you different. You got to find a thing that makes you stand out from the pack. We all mm-hmm. talking about the same shit repetitively. We're all going yes. over the same things over and over. The thing that I always instill in people, though, is with me, you can't get me out of listening to anything but me. Don't mm-hmm. try to make yourself the next... Uh, Joe Button or the next Joe Rogan or anybody else, be the first you. So yeah. you have to find a way to make your situation stand out differently from everybody else. And if you're just going to come on and do a parody of somebody else's shit, then you're going to sound like a parody of somebody else's shit. And guess yeah. what? If I wanted that style, I would just go to them and not come to you. <laughs> so it's absolutely different podcasts that you go to for different things. Mm-hmm. What I want to hear about, like I just had, like I said, uh, the sipping tea with Shay. I said to her, you're like the podcast news because for me, I don't follow any celebrities. I probably got like two celebrities that I'm following on Instagram or Twitter because I don't mm-hmm. give a fuck what they're doing all day. I don't I'm care where you're way. performing. I don't care where you're performing. I don't care what you're eating for dinner. I don't care what kind of car you're driving. What I care about is what's this other podcast in New York? What's this podcast over Jersey? What's this podcast in St. Louis? Because I want to make those connections. Mm-hmm. I can't connect with Damian Lillard like, to see what he's it's got true. going on. So it's like I try to put myself in those different situations, but you also have to go, all right, I listen to y'all because I want to get a laugh right now. I listen to y'all because y'all going to be on some serious shit. I'm listening to y'all because yes. y'all going to cover the sports shit. So like you're saying that, absolutely you got to use mm-hmm. those different things and plus if you listen to enough people's podcasts it's like you feel like you build a rapport with that person through listening to that content if they're open and honest yeah. enough with it not that you always got to give the, the the listeners all your business because like you don't have to personalize all of this shit to, under, to let the person understand the type of person that you are or what you believe mm-hmm. in or how you structure your thoughts or any of that type of shit on my platform i do that everything that i speak about I've gone through so much in life. So mostly all the things that I speak about, I personalize it. I'll give examples of how, you know, what it is I went through, how I dealt with it and things like that. Whether it's kids, relationships, 
anything. I personalize it. So I'm an open book on my platform. Hold, hold up. We're going there right now. Since you already, you know what I'm saying, you took us there. We was going there anyway. We're going to dive into the podcast now. Just because I give you my personal experience or what happened with me, don't mean that I got to tell you that that's what I'm giving you this example from. Because you don't want to overshare true. and put too much of your shit out there for people. Because, see, that's another thing that people will do is weaponize your problems against you. Like yeah, how many times right. that happened to how, me once? How many times did, for instance, let's say you and your cousin is talking about this dude that you was talking to, and now he was doing some dumb shit, but now it's six months later, y'all still together. And now she goes, Oh, that same dumbass nigga that did this, that, or whatever the thing is. Like, yeah, people use your problems to weaponize them against you. That's why I always would say, like, most of the stuff I'll try not to personalize unless we're talking about my kids or my situation. But mm-hmm. Yeah, I can throw something out there in your head of know where the hell I got that from. Yeah. My sister gave me that advice once because one time on a live, um, I have this rule where I make guys wait. I don't have sex fast, you know. I have a six-month rule. So six months or more, and after that, then I'll determine whether he's worthy or not for me to sleep with. Six so on one of... <laughs> So on one of my lives, we were talking. Could have had a baby and all that goddamn stuff. Could have had a preemie. On one of my lives, <laughs> we're talking about that, and one of the viewers were like, "Says the girl with four kids. Like, what does me having four kids have to do anything with my role?" Damn, so when this build up, girl, I was locked, loaded, and ready. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so I get where you're saying. Sometimes people use, you know, things in a way that they shouldn't. Um, on last week's episode that you'll hear right before we get to this one uh, was about are we teaching young ladies the right things and it was like about you got to instill the right values in them and you have to make the young lady understand that the more value she places on herself is the more value that he'll place on you so yes. like you said I mean six months is low it's, whew, I mean <laughs> that's not bad because if you think about it, six months is the the talking phase, then the dating phase. You know, I tell you, you gotta take your time. No, no, no. People I'm rush not. things. Copy. Uh, the first two months we both lying. The first two months we still lying to each other because it's like yes. I don't know if I'm gonna still be talking to her. She don't know if she's still gonna be talking to me. So we're not keeping it all the way honest. These first two months, we all agree to that. Mm-hmm. Once we get to month four, it's like, all right, yeah, she cool. I kind of fuck with her. He's cool. I kind of fuck with him. God damn it. At month six is what I'm saying. I understand now. <laughs> six months, shit. No wonder you ass Yeah, time, time, time goes by fast, you know? <laughs> Ooh. God damn, fellas. Six months. Ooh. <laughs> it's worth it, guys. It's worth it. I promise. <laughs> all right. So how long you how long you been doing the podcast? A year and a half. A year and a half and in that year yeah. and a half what have you learned about yourself through the podcast i've learned that well especially in the beginning i've learned that i had so much more to grow you know i felt like i was stuck in one certain spot in my life and i was content with that and that's when the whole pandemic hit and it pushed me to get out of my comfort zone so i I've, I've grown a lot within the past year uh, in order to grow, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Your comfort zone is called that because it's comfortable. Uh, mm-hmm. You feel a lot better, though, when you yawn in the morning and you get that good stretch out. That's because you're getting yourself out of there. <laughs> yeah. You're stretching mm-hmm. yourself out and you're trying to figure out what are the limits that I can reach if I make myself a little uncomfortable. And what do you do when you get that good stretch? You go, ah, ah, and all Best that. feeling in the world. So you can't ever... Uh, get yourself stagnant into that comfort zone to the point where you don't recognize that I'm not growing, I'm not evolving. So, shout yeah. out to you for, you know, you recognize that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, Barbara. You. Um, what is the, something that you're trying to, what is the goal that you're trying to accomplish with the podcast? The goal for the podcast, well, my brother says that he sees me being the next Oprah. So, I, you know, I put that out there. I'll take a card like, since you handed him out, something black, you know, Escalade, stretch style. <laughs> just to throw something out there um the goal is always to share my story with people and hopefully touch which is the my name let me touch you touching people with my words and encouraging them to deal with things 
in a different way. Because like I said, a lot of times people are stuck in the same position because they're doing the same thing over and over again. I've been that person. So sometimes hearing it from someone else, trying in a different way can help, you know, them move forward in whatever it is they're doing. So the goal is to keep touching as many people as I can, helping them see that there's light at the end of the tunnel, helping them see that, you know, there's always better days to look for. Just because you're going through something right now doesn't mean that it's going to be that way forever. I'm a true believer that everything happens for a reason. That's like my line. Everything happens for a reason. You will get through it. Whenever I even copy, copy, whenever I even stub a toe and be like, shit, what did I do that I got away with? <laughs> <laughs> when my kids, just, whenever they trip or something, I'll be like, see, God saw something you did. God punished you. That's what I'm saying. They'd be like, damn, what did I get away with? Did I walk straight into the bed that I knew was there? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. All right, to close the to close it out, to close out the year, y'all. Damn. Uh 2021. To close out the year. What are your 2022 goals for the podcast? Are they any different than what you're trying to just do in general? Because I did kind of ask the same question. Um, any different as of right now? Well. There's one thing that I want to do. I do want to eventually travel, like do like a tour, a podcasting tour, where I go to different states and collab with different podcasters in person. Because, you know, with all this COVID stuff, everything has been virtual lately. So I would love for things to get back to some sort of norm so I can eventually do like a podcasting tour. Hey, man, shouts out to Smoke Free Weekend uh, 2020. We were supposed to be going to Vegas to do podcast festival but they got shut down because of the rona um so do you hear that paco uh no you listening bro uh, <laughs> trying to see if we can make that situation happen uh next summer um yeah but damn i appreciate you coming on uh us talking this out we found out that we got a lot in common uh yes. sounds like i need to sounds like i got a friday 9 30 situation to be locking in pretty soon yes and, and i'll um, definitely lock you in so you can be a guest one of these fridays we'll set that up and yeah, so let me stay this uh, to end the year off. If you, uh, the first line of every episode is I appreciate you hitting the button because I genuinely appreciate y'all hitting the button. If you like the post, if you share the post, if you bought a wristband, a t-shirt, uh, I mean, not a t-shirt, a jersey, uh, whatever it is that you've done to help me push this situation forward, I appreciate it. Thank you. And we're going to go into the next year and we're going to make this thing even bigger. We're going to make this rundown at least three to four minutes shout out to my man bruce leroy he told me when i lie he said nah bro when you log in the first 45 seconds i say all right i know i got time to get myself ready because he's about to go through this long ass run down <laughs> so i appreciate y'all all hitting the button and that's the episode that's episode 46 we are out appreciate you hitting the button welcome to the how to hustle podcast with hype follow me on instagram and twitter at i am hype that's h-y-m-p-e it's hype it's not hype i'm not geeked up